the wild update is here and there are so many new blocks. Let's take a look. Hello everyone and it is Minecraft 119 wild update time. We have got a load of new blocks to look at and some of these blocks are completely wild. And I'm going to separate this out into four sections. The deep dark blocks, utility blocks, muddy blocks and woody blocks. Plus there's a couple of extras that don't really belong anywhere. Which of these blocks are you most excited about? Let me know in the comments below. I'd be really interested to find out. And while you're down there, maybe hit that like button and the subscribe button. It really helps out the channel and it costs you absolutely nothing. There are quite a few new blocks, but they can all fit inside a large chest. First up, the deep dark blocks. Skulk blocks can be found in deep dark biomes, deep inside the caves below Y0 with huge amounts being available in ancient cities. Although, if you saw my video a few days ago about the mobs of Minecraft 119, you might not want to be walking around here without any protection. Skulk itself is very interesting. It's what makes up most of the deep dark biome. But what's great about this is it's XP waiting to happen. There are 20 Skulk blocks here. I'm just going to mine them out. I started at XP zero, just 20 blocks is going to give me some XP for me to be able to move forwards in my game. Nearly three levels of XP from just 20 Skulk blocks. And you saw how much Skulk there was down in those deep dark caves. However, point of note, when you mine it, it doesn't drop the block, it only drops the XP. Unless you mine it like that with a silk touch pick and then you get the block but you don't get the XP. So I guess you can mine it all out and save the XP till later a little bit like an XP bank. I also really like the texture of this. You could almost use this to create like a night sky with lots of little stars or perhaps some mystical pathway through a magical village. It's got some great opportunities. Skulk Vein is a little bit like the glow lichen of the deep dark, except it doesn't give out any light. Come on, it's called the deep dark. But unlike glow lichen, you can't mine it with shears. You have to have a silk touch weapon to be able to get it off the ground. Next up, it's the Skulk Sensor, and this can feel the vibrations of the earth and the things that go on around it. Just to demonstrate this, if I just literally walk around it, it is being activated constantly by the vibrations of my feet. However, if I stand on wall, there is a wall dampening effect. It doesn't do anything. I can jump up and down and it does absolutely nothing, which is also true if I sneak. If I press shift and I crouch and I move around and sneak, it does not activate that skulk sensor either. And it's the skulk sensors that are going to get you into trouble when you go down into those ancient cities. But before I talk about why that's the case, I just want to talk about one thing that is really exciting, wireless redstone. This skulk sensor lets out a redstone pulse and of course it doesn't need anything to touch it to do that. It does however need a comparator to suck that signal out a little bit like a furnace or a chest would. So let me demonstrate, I'm on my wall right now so I'm not making any vibrations, the skulk sensor doesn't know I'm there but if I move around that skulk sensor immediately sees my vibration, lets out the redstone signal which is sucked out through that comparator into the redstone box. I bounce again and I get another signal. This opens up all kinds of really awesome opportunities. However, I mentioned about it causing problems and this is when it's combined with one of these other blocks. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the Skulk Shrieker. It's the Skulk Shrieker that will summon the Warden, which unless you're really prepared for it, is gonna eat your face clean off. When I create a vibration, that causes the Shrieker to shout. That Shrieker only needs to shout four times and the Warden turns up. Fortunately, only when you're in the deep dark biomes though, specifically within the ancient cities. We have got some sensors and some shriekers here. So I'm going to try and set these off. You can see they're going off all over the place with me just walking around. And I can already hear some very unpleasant noises in the background. And I think it's quite likely that we're going to find a friend turn up any minute. And I can hear him. I just can't see him, which is always a worry. Where is he? He is right here. And if I wasn't in creative mode right now, he would totally be going after me. And finally for Skulk, we have got the Skulk Catalyst. And this is the block that gives you a reason to actually try and kill that Warden. Now Skulk Catalysts do naturally spawn in deep dark caves. However, when you mine them out and you're going to use a pick to mine them out to best effect, you're going to get nothing apart from quite a lot of experience. Unless of course you use a Silk Touch pick. These blocks will be picked out if you have a Silk Touch pick. So it could be that is the way to move forwards. Or you can kill a Warden because the Warden will drop one when you kill it. But who cares, frankly, why are they so important? Because this dear viewer represents unlimited XP. 
if you kill any mob nearby, automatically you get one, a challenge called It Spreads, and two, you get Skulk Blocks, landing exactly where that beast died. And as you've already seen, if you mine those out, you get even more experience. So you get experience for killing the mob, and then more experience for mining out the skulk. So imagine, if you were to connect that somehow to some kind of mob farm, you could end up with something really quite interesting. Well, that spread a little bit further than I thought it would. So that's the awesome skulk block. Now let's look at these utility blocks. And they include the frog lights and the chest in a boat. And the boat with chest is just that, it's a chest in a boat and you can access this two ways you can either shift and right click on it and it will open up that chest or alternatively you can right click on it and then press e and it will open up that chest you can then move along and press e you can see exactly what it is you're carrying with you this is a really really good way for you to be able to expand your inventory when you go off exploring unfortunately it doesn't act like a shulker because when you break it all the items inside the boat with chest come out and you have to hold them so you have to have inventory slots to be able to do that but you do get the chest in the boat back as well so it's a recyclable commodity i still think this is a brilliant way for you to be able to increase the amount of stuff that you've got in your inventory when you go exploring to craft this you just need a boat and a chest and out comes your boat in a chest and you've got a variant for all of the different woods and then we've got these frog lights the brand new light source in minecraft 119 However, these are a little trickier to come by. First, you're gonna to need to go to the nether and you're gonna to need to take a frog with you. And then you're gonna to need to find a basalt delta. Then you're gonna to need to find some magma cubes and you're gonna to need to bash them until you've only got the baby magma cubes left. And once you've just got small magma cubes, let your frog do the rest. It will hunt out those little baby magma cubes and every time it licks one of them with its long tongue, it will drop one of these frog lights. And the frog light you get will very much depend on which variant of frog it is you have brought into the nether with you. Per lesson frog lights will come from the lighter colored frogs that you'll get from mangrove swamps these ochre frog lights will come from the warm biome frogs the orange colored ones and green frogs will give you these ones these are the verdant frog lights frog lights give out a light level of 15 which is the highest level in the game the same as glowstone and sea lanterns and i reckon these have got such a beautiful texture they could be used for some really great effects in your builds next up muddy blocks and first of all the mud block itself now you can find lots and lots of these mud blocks naturally occurring inside a mangrove swamp what's interesting about the mud block however it is not a solid block like other blocks are look i'm on the dirt here and you can see my shoes if i go into the mud my shoes disappear i sink two pixels down that means it hasn't got a solid top very much like soul sand and if you can't find a mangrove swamp and you really want some mud all you need is some dirt or coarse dirt Treat it with a bottle of water and you have got mud right there. You can mine that out with your hand, although you can do it quicker if you use a spade. Also, if you have mud and you place it on top of a block with dripstone underneath it, whilst it won't take any water out of it, it will eventually turn into clay. So again, 119 gives us an opportunity for another farm, a clay farm. You can also use mud to make different building blocks. Come into a crafting table and mix some wheat with some mud and you get a packed mud block. I really like the texture of this packed mud block. I can see lots of builders going for it. Not just in walls, but if combined with path blocks, gravel and coarse dirt, and perhaps some other blocks, you'll make some great roads out of this. You can take it one step further by getting yourself a load of packed mud and putting it into a square like that in a crafting table. You get mud bricks, which are gonna make some absolutely superb walls, especially when textured out with that packed mud as well. You can then use a stone cutter or a crafting table to use these mud bricks and make out brick slabs, brick stairs, and also brick walls. Watch out for future videos from me using these bricks in a lot of builds. And then we've got all of our mangrove blocks, except my mangrove propagule has grown into a mangrove tree. I didn't mean that to happen. And I am genuinely excited by this new wood. It's not often you're gonna hear me say that, to be honest, but this wood is really beautiful. What a great color we've got. It's gonna be really good for roofs and for variegation and texturing. I'm really excited by what we could actually do with it. And it's really nice to have another door that's solid and has got holes in. So we have the full family of craftable blogs. We've got the the wood we've got the logs we've got the stripped wood the strip logs signs planks stairs slabs doors fences gates trap doors pressure plates buttons and of course the boats and this 
is the proper gill, which I'll come back to in a moment. But we've also got roots, muddy roots, and leaves. And I also really like the texture on these leaves. The propagule is basically the sapling for the mangrove tree. And you can plant them in water as well as on land. If I grow this up here, you'll see we get a mangrove tree in the water. Its roots are towering above before we even get any of that trunk coming on. I really love this because that represents the way mangrove trees actually grow in the wild. And you see the propagules are growing off of the tree. We don't wait for the leaves to decay. We take the sapling straight off the tree. Similarly, when we pro a propagul on the land, we get a similar structure. There are lots and lots of different varieties of this tree. They grow in really strange, random directions. And these leaves are just fantastic. And I love the fact that we can add extra texture to these roots by mixing them up with a little bit of mud. Muddy mangrove roots right there. And that gives a really nice effect that you could make a really interesting creation in a swamp or in a base, mixing up the roots with the muddy roots to make it look more authentic. I can see these colors being used for all kinds of builds here. Roofs are gonna be especially good for this, I think. And then we've got a couple of extra blocks that I just want to mention. And the first one is frog spawn. Now you get frog spawn when you make two frogs by hitting them with a slime ball. Very much like turtles, one of them will then become pregnant. You'll get a little bit of experience and off one will go to lay the frog spawn. After a while, that frog spawn will turn into tadpoles. And you'll get between two and five tadpoles for every patch of frog spawn that you create. And what's quite cool, you can collect up a tadpole in a bucket just by clicking on it with a full bucket, and that will give you a bucket of tadpole, which is also officially a new block. You can then take that bucket of tadpole to a different biome and splash that into another block of water. And in doing this, you can get yourself your different colored frogs because there's three options to choose from which gives you the chance to get all three of those different colored frog lights. In this cold biome, the frog's green. Another new block you might not be aware of is this disc fragment block to music disc five. If you search through the ancient cities, there are lots and lots of chests and you can find these and a load of other treasures inside them. Once you've got nine, place them into a crafting grid like that and it'll give you Samuel Aberg's music disc number five. Place that into a jukebox and it starts to get really weird. I'm not gonna spoil it and play it all. You'll have to get your own to find out what the story of Music Disc 5 is. And the last thing I wanna mention is the Echo Shard. And you can find these in exactly the same chests you'll find the pieces of Music Disc. If you come into a crafting table, you get your Echo Shards and you ring them like a donut in the crafting grid, place a compass in the middle, you get a recovery compass. Now, your recovery compass is not like a normal compass. A standard compass will point towards the spawn chunks. And when you get in the spawn chunks, towards the block that you spawn in on in the world. A recovery compass is different. If you follow a recovery compass, it will always point you back to the place that you last died. So if you just got battered by the warden, you might have a fighting chance of finding your stuff a lot quicker than maybe you would do without it. Or maybe, if you're like me, find the exact sweet berry bush that took your life just moments ago. So now you've seen them, which of these brand new blocks do you think you are going to like the best in Minecraft 119? Again, head down to those comments and let me know. And I will look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye!